Now joined by representatives from the University of Tennessee, Joros Plopschik, Josiah Jordan James, Kennedy Chandler, along with Coach Rick Barnes. Coach, make a quick statement. Yeah, congratulations to Michigan. They uh, is a hard-fought game. They uh, made some plays at the end. You know, the uh, certainly for them to be in a position to win the game. We, uh, with that said, there's. I wouldn't give um, this group of guys we've had have been a special group of guys, and we're how far we've come and starting the year with seven freshmen and how they've meshed together. This has been a really special group for us, and uh, really hard uh, when you lose, uh, whether you lose first round or in the final four, it's hard because it is to, it puts an end to your season. And we had, uh, again, all I can say is how proud I am of our team and how hard uh, they've worked all year long to get where we are. And I'm disappointed for them because, again, I, I just love the work and what they've put into this program this year. And uh, we'll never take for granted being in this tournament. I mean, there's people that never get a chance to do it and the fact that They've worked hard to get here and have a chance to play this time of year is special, and um, I appreciate this team so much. We're going to take questions for the student athletes first. Raise your hand, we'll bring a microphone. Over here in the back, right? Uh, this is for oh, Karthik Venkatraman, WBIR in Knoxville. This is for any of you, I know you guys had uh, you know much larger expectations than getting bounced in the second round. Uh, you know, how tough is it to end your season like this? It's really tough. Um, we, um, we know that we had bigger expectations, but uh, credit to Michigan, they played uh, better basketball for 40 minutes. But um, I think you, you can't, everybody in that locker room deserves to, to put their head high for what we were able to do this season. Um, it definitely hurts. It, it's not a good feeling being up here right now on the losing end. But I mean, you just got to grow from it is how you respond to losses. But uh, I'm going to miss being around this group of guys for sure. Over here on the right, the shirt. Yeah, if I guess for all of you guys as well, the, they, it seemed like the switch to zone was a big deal for them. Kennedy was going, getting to the rim a lot. How important was that? And uh, what did you guys see in some of those later possessions? Um, for me. I mean, when we set the zone, you know, we're just doing a normal offense, you know, just run our uh, transition, our man offense. So even though that was going zone, we just kept running our basic offense and, you know, attacking the zone and try to apply uh, a pressure on the defense, you know, just fi find a, the open gap in the space in the zone. And it was just kind of a wear zone, honestly. But, you know, coach was telling us just run our normal offense and keep attacking them. Front row right here. Any, have you given any thought to your future and, and what's next for you? With all due respect, he won't be answering any questions about his future today. Back row, back right there. Mike Wells, ESPN. Kennedy, you were obviously emotional after the game. What encouraging, encouraging words did uh, Coach Howard say to you when you guys embraced? Uh, you know, he was saying, keep my head up, you know. Um, you know, it's tough for me, and he know I really wanted to get the win. You know, um, I know him. I play with his son since, like, fourth grade, so I know him for a long time. So uh, he's a great coach. Uh, I love him. Um, but, you know, he was telling me to keep my head up, and, you know, you play your heart out. That's what he told me. Take one more for the student athletes. Josiah, two days removed from how well you guys shot the ball against Longwood. Can it just hard to stomach just not being able to find the bottom of the net there toward the end? Yeah, I mean, it's tough, but we shot the shots that we practiced. I mean, today just for 40 minutes, they didn't go in. Credit to Michigan, they played pretty good defense, but I feel like we, we just, um, today just wasn't our day shooting the ball, um, but give a lot of credit to Michigan. Thanks, guys. I'll let you go. We'll take a few questions for Coach Barnes. Over here in the red. Coach, it's never easy doing these, you know, but I want to focus on something positive. Um, so much orange here following you. What do you say to the fans that have supported you and your team that came up here and followed you and just great team support all season? I would say what I learned seven years ago when I came to Knoxville and early in the season playing a non-league game, we 
playing an in-state team that uh, Christmas Eve and they had to move the game because of some bowl, something to go with SEC football at that time. And we had 16,000 people in the fans. And since that time, I've realized what I didn't know growing up two and a half, three hours from Knoxville, the love that uh, Tennessee people have for the for our great state and for our university, and it's and it's special. And uh, you know, I, I talk about it. All. I don't care what fan base is out there. There's none better than what we have. I don't care what. And and I think this university deserves a chance to continue to have success and let people see exactly what makes it special. And uh, it's been a blessing for me, to be quite honest with you. Uh, you know, seven years ago, I wasn't sure about a lot of things, but looking back, I think God had a great plan for me, and I'm telling you, I've, I've loved every minute of it. Front row, we have one here. Rick, it seemed like for a large portion of this game that, that Michigan really kind of controlled the tempo and the style of play. Was, was that the case? And it seemed like it had been a long time since, since that had happened. Why do you think your, your guys didn't really handle that? You know, Mike, I don't know if they controlled the tempo. They got tired. and We knew it. And we kept trying to push the tempo. Like someone asked about a zone. We were glad when they went in zone because we knew they weren't going to stay in it. So that, that was not a factor. You know, we, we, we knew if we dribbled a couple times, they would switch man to man. What we weren't able to do was take advantage of it early inside when we were able to because sometimes they end up with some mismatches there and uh the the really the difference in the game was the second chance points i mean those two offensive rebounds we gave up were huge at the time and during that stretch we had and, and again we knew they would i mean everybody we played all years being concerned about the three-point line but we missed three four looks that we would like to i don't think we could have got it better but some days they go some days they don't uh but if, you, if you'd have told me looking at the stat sheet that, you know, that we were going to uh, turn them over 15 times, 16 times, we only had seven uh, points in the paint, we outscored them. I would have never thought that. And, uh, but the second fast break points, 19 to five, bench points, 18 to 11, but second chance points, 13 to seven. And that, those, those two big offensive rebounds came after we really got them to take two pretty difficult shots. And, uh, but that's, that's it. You know, we didn't, Kennedy did a, a great job. You know, we, we, uh, they, they really didn't have an answer for him with his speed going downhill. And, and, uh, uh, and we knew that we could get him in some ball screens at the time. But uh, again, we needed to have, I think, more inside today. I, we, I like to see us do a little bit more inside and be able to put a little more pressure on, on uh, Hunter Dixon. We knew we were going to do that with ball screen defense. I mean, with ball screen offense, we knew we were going to make him guard and but give them credit. I mean, they, they made the plays there at the end. And, and, uh, but those two offensive rebounds were huge plays in the game. Go right here, Brad. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Coach, I know you, you, got, you outscored him in the paint, but you got so much that from your guards. And, and you, I know you're not reflecting yet, but when you look at this team, have you been concerned about the lack of just a reliable post scoring like all season? Yes. I mean, because I, I think in college, you've got to have somebody, and, and regardless of, size you've got to have somebody that, that can go in when you have days like this when you can't seem to find the bottom of the bucket you've got to be able to throw it in there and and, and get fouled uh you know put pressure on people and uh so but i'm also proud of the way i mean today again at time we had a lot of freshmen out there and we you know new experience for i think we only had three guys that have been in the ncaa ncaa game but jonas uh brandon those guys have grown up you know Uros has gotten better. folky has been with us a long time, but uh, yeah, you, you, I think in, at the co collegiate level, you've got to have some presence around the rim, and we haven't been able to do that consistently. And as you said, it came mostly from our guards penetrating and playing in that area. We'll go here in the white. Yeah, Rick, I, I know every team and every season is, is different, but is it frustrating to? To, to win the tournament, be in a, a good position and not be able to, to, to get past this first weekend again? It's very frustrating because, but I will tell you this, and I'm, I'm really frustrated. I've been blessed to be here a bunch and some teams got here that probably people didn't think would get here. Some teams that, have, that we expected to get here and it didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. But I can tell you from experience, whether you lose on the first day, the second day like we did today, or you lose in the semifinals, it's the same feeling. 
it's, it's, it's a fun, and people can say whatever they want to say about, uh, you don't ever take getting here for granted. I mean, it is so hard to get here, especially when you play in a, a, a league that's very, very competitive, and I think most leagues are. I, I do, I think most leagues are really competitive. So you don't take that for granted, but um, is it frustrating? Yeah, I've, I've been frustrated a lot in my career, but I'm, I'm also very thankful that I've been able to, to be here because uh, one of our coaches said in the locker room he played for four years at a, at a terrific program, never got to taste this. And like I told her guys, in life you don't always get what you want when you want it, but the fact is you got to get in the arena and fight for it and not be afraid to, to, to you know, you're going to lose some. You are. But you, the key is you get back up and try to go again, and, and we're going to do that because of this group of guys, they, they learned a lot about a lot of different things this year. But uh, it hurts. You know, and, and again, and it would bother me. I mean, if you were in our locker room, you could you would have known that this was a very special group of young men in the way their emotions let out. And uh, uh, but it, but it hurts. It, it does. And, and if it didn't, it'd be time to quit. Go right here in the gray. Chris Ballas with Wolverine.com on 3.com. Coach, just talk about how hard it is to guard Hunter Dickinson when he's shooting the way he did today. That's been kind of up and down for him. Well, we were we were glad he was shooting from out there. We wanted we had let him have all he wanted. We really did because we we around the rim. And but when he hurt us the most was when they finally and they did exactly what we thought they would do. Coming out of halftime, they would try to establish him on the block there. And and again, we we knew that. Uh, and uh, and but again, do we think we we could shut him out? We didn't because. Uh, but we also at that we had two stops here where we couldn't rebound the ball. And uh, that, that was a really pivotal time for us. But he's a he's a he's a hard player to guard. And uh, two years in a row, we've gone up against a big burly kind of post players that's hurt us. And uh, <clears throat> we've got to. And again, I thought Uros played as hard as he could today. I thought he really battled there. And John, I mean, I think our post guys really did. But we had three, you know, two freshmen that haven't played a lot uh, until this year, and they started doing it more lately. And John's been around, but that's a really tough matchup for him. And Uros, I thought, really battled as hard as he could. We're going to take two more in the middle and then the right. Rick, you mentioned those three-point shots there when you're up six, I think, with eight minutes left. Just how much different do you think this one is if one of those falls? Well, you think about it, we got a great look at the end of the half. I mean, just great execution. Uh, Santi had one in the corner. Zakai had one. Josiah. I mean, we had we had we had some. And again, they did a good job. I don't want to take anything away from Michigan. They did, but we've been guarded like that. Actually, Santi came over to me and said to me, Coach, they're not guarding me nearly as hard as I've been guarded, because most teams have really tried to work to take him out. And and uh, but you know they they were they they're, they're again they're a good basketball team. If you're playing this time of year, you're a good basketball team. And. And, and they're good. They, they, uh, I thought their guard play was really good. And uh, certainly they have a post player that's unique. And um, he does a lot of good things. He, he's a hard guy to, if you would like to go double him, he passes the ball well. He, he knows where he wants the ball. They do, they do a good job of knowing where they want to get him the ball. And, and so we, we had to, early in the game, we did not do a very good job with our ball screen defense. We knew that they were going to come out some way, somehow, try to negate our, uh, pressure on defense and they chose to do that by trying to split our double teams, which they did. Then we switched a little bit here, came out the second half double. We just tried to keep them off balance there, but I thought their guards overall did a good job of getting down the lane with it. And uh, But we again, in a game like this, it's a possession game. You, you expect that to happen and it goes down. Like I said, two huge possessions were those offensive rebounds were huge possessions. And yeah, I would have Love to see some of those. I mean, the shots that we we, we shot, but um, that's part of it, you know. I'll take our last question here on the right. Yeah, Rick. I know Kennedy didn't want to talk about the future, but how do you view his development over the course of a season and his readiness to possibly go at this point? Well, where we are today in college basketball, you could sit here and ask any player on your team that. With what I mean, every every on the team is going to have a choice to make if they want to. I mean, with the transfer portal being what it is. Uh, Going overseas to play, you, I could come up with a lot of different things. But in terms of Kennedy, he's grown tremendously. He uh, came in and uh, a, a, just a great kid. You know, he's uh, uh, a teammate. Uh, he never ever made it about him. I don't think he ever walked in like uh, 
acting like I'm a one and done player. I don't think that at all. He came in wanting to win. Uh, if you'd have, I think if you'd have, you probably saw his emotion, it was much more than that in the locker room. Because these guys, these, this is a group of guys, they are extremely close. They really have bonded in a way that uh, doesn't often happen anymore. But uh, he, he, got, he got so much better, and I think so much of that had to do with his teammates. I think that uh, Zakai and, and Santi had a lot to do with it, uh, the, com the competition that they played with every day in practice. And then, uh, you know, he, he was willing to listen early in the year. I, I told him early I thought he had some success. Uh, you know, I go back to the Villanova game. You know, he was I, – I knew, I knew that he was a, a guy that really wanted to be good because he was really locked in for that game and got just two really poor calls the first three, four minutes of that game that changed that game for us where he was called for a, a, a charge and a block, which he had really – I mean, it was a tough, two tough plays for him. And then he came back and against Colorado, he played great. And I told him, I said, I, th I think you think it's going to be this easy every night. It's not going to be this easy. And you've got to be willing to know that you've got to grow. You've got to grow. And, it, and it's not just offensively. It's, you're going to have to learn to guard the basketball. You're going to have to learn to get into uh, – understand how to guard ball screen coverage and all that. And it took him a little bit longer. Uh, from that angle, but once he once he decided to, and again, it locked into it. He he did. He he started working at it. But I go back. I think this Santi and Zakai and Josiah had a lot to help to do with him growing the way he did. Thank you for the time, Coach. All right, thank you guys. Recording of this press conference will be available on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.baritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us.